I want to show you how you can both get and use OBS. What is OBS? Well, it's an extremely powerful and versatile screen recorder that you can also use to stream to services like Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook. I use it to record all my videos on this channel. Best of all, it's entirely free and it's also open source. My YouTube friends. All right, let's jump into the computer and see how we can get OBS. Here I am on my PC and first I want to show you how you can get OBS. Once again, it's entirely free to get OBS. Head to the website obsproject.com. I've also included a link in the description so you could simply click on that to navigate to the website. The great thing about OBS is it works across all major platforms including Windows, Mac, and Linux. To download OBS, simply click on the operating system that you're using and then run through the installation process. Now we gotta get it all set up, so you know what? Let's get to it! Once you've finished downloading and installing OBS, go ahead and launch the app. It's gonna drop you on a screen that looks like this. For those of you who are wondering how I'm recording this, well, I'm actually using OBS. So OBS allows you to launch multiple instances of the app, so it's kind of like the movie Inception. I'm using OBS to record OBS. Kind of weird. Right now we simply have a black screen, so how do we get started? By far the easiest way to get going with OBS is to go to the top menu, click on Tools, and then click on the Auto Configuration Wizard. This opens up the auto configuration wizard and here we have a choice to make. You need to decide exactly what you want to use OBS for. You can use it for streaming, screen recording, or you could use it as a virtual camera. The streaming option, if you select this, is going to go through and ask you to select a service provider. So are you using Twitch, YouTube, or Facebook? Then it'll also help you identify the best bit rate and setup for your broadcast. Now recording, just like the name implies, you're going to be able to record the screen or games or cameras or whatever you want to record into a video file on your computer that you're gonna be able to either edit or send it to others. And finally, there's another option for using the virtual camera. So what is the virtual camera? Well, the virtual camera is going to allow you to send anything that you set up in OBS to different video conferencing software, whether it's Microsoft Teams, Zoom, or Google Meet, or any other service that allows you to input a virtual camera. For this tutorial today, I'm going to optimize for recording but just keep in mind what you see today you can use for streaming and also for the virtual camera. Once you make your selection, you can click on next. Next, we have a few more questions that we're going to need to answer. First, we need to tell it what our base resolution is. And I would select the option that matches your actual monitor. So in my case, it's going to be 1920 by 1080. Next, there's a question about the frames per second that we want to use, and we have several options here as well. We can go with 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second, or we could do either one but prefer either a higher or lower frames. In general, if you're going to be recording, say, gameplay, you probably want to go with a higher frame rate that makes it look a bit smoother. But if you're going to be recording things like your desktop or an application, you're going to be just fine with 30 frames per second. I'm going to select 30 frames per second now, but feel free to choose the value that matches what you're planning on recording. Once we make all of our selections, let's click on Next. On the next screen, we're going to see the final results of the Auto Configuration Wizard. This shows the various settings that it's going to put in place for our recording. All this looks great, so we're just going to click Apply. Now, if you want to go back and make any modifications to the settings, you can always click on Tools again and run through the Auto Configuration Wizard. Once again, this is by far the easiest way to get started. Alternatively, if you want to tweak various settings, you can click on the Settings button down here in the bottom right-hand corner and then go on to the output. Then you can select recording and you can change some settings here. And if you want full control, you can also click on advanced up here on the top and then select recording. But of course, once again, using the auto configuration wizard is by far the easiest way to get going. The last thing I wanna do while we're already in settings is go ahead and click on the audio tab. Then under global audio devices, I'm just gonna make sure all these are disabled. 
And that's because I want to select my audio devices myself. I don't really need them to help me do it. Likes and comments are super easy things that you can do to help push this video to a wider audience. So take a second down below and let me know how I'm doing and maybe while you're there, if you're not subscribed, please do. It really does help me continue to make content that helps you. So thanks. Now that we've gone through the auto configuration wizard and all of our settings are in place, next we need to tell OBS what we want to record or what we want to stream. And to do this, we're going to use this real estate right here. This black rectangle area is referred to as the preview window. And we're going to add different sources to this scene to populate it. Down in the bottom left hand corner, you can see that the scene is called scene. We'll leave this name for now. However, you can also add additional scenes. You can also remove scenes. And later on, we're gonna do that. And once you start getting multiple scenes, it's really a good idea to rename them so you know what they are. First though, I wanna get started using OBS. So let's now focus on the sources. Let's start adding a few simple ones. You might be wondering, what is a source? Well, let's click on the plus icon to see what type of items we can add to our scene. Here we see a list of all different types of sources that we can add. There are two of these you're most likely to use. One of them is called display capture. Basically, this will capture the display or your desktop. If you're gonna be playing a game, you'll likely wanna click on game capture instead. This is optimized for gaming. Now let's click on the display capture to capture our desktop. This opens to a prompt where we can give it a name. I'm gonna leave it display capture. Once again, if you start adding many different sources, it really does help to give it a unique name so you can identify it later on. Now, if you have multiple monitors, you're gonna be able to click on display and select the monitor that you wanna use. In this case, I have my primary monitor selected and it shows my desktop. And once everything's set correctly, you can just click OK. Now our scene is kind of coming together. We have our desktop captured. But if you're recording or streaming, you're probably going to want to include audio as well. So what we need to do is add a source for our microphone or our system audio. So let's click once again under Sources. And we're going to go to Audio Input Capture. And this is going to allow us to add a microphone to our system. So I'm going to go ahead and call this microphone and click OK. And on the property screen, I'm going to choose the device that's carrying my microphone. In my particular case, it is my Camlink Pro Audio 1. And then when I click OK, you can see that my microphone is working and audio is coming through. But we want to hear possibly any sort of desktop sounds that are going on as well. So it's really easy to capture your desktop sound. All you have to do is click the plus and we're going to go to audio output capture. And we're going to call this one desktop audio and click OK. And now we need to drop this down and select where we're actually listening to our audio. Now if you're using a microphone, you're probably going to be listening to your audio through your headphones. If you're not using a microphone, then you can just select the speakers that are playing the sound for your audio. So if I was gonna select my speakers, I could do that right here. In this case, I'm going to select my headphones because I have a microphone. And now we have our desktop audio and our microphone. So everything appears to be working as it's supposed to. Now that I added system sound, you can see both microphones in the system. After you start adding a few different sources, you can see why it's really important to name everything Otherwise, you have no idea what these are. It would just be audio one and audio two. It's impossible to tell. Next, let's focus our attention on the audio mixer. Here, once again, you can see all the different audio sources. You can also drag this right here to adjust the levels or you can mute or unmute any source. Over here on the right, you can also go to advanced audio properties and do just a little bit more. To the right of the audio mixer, we also have scene transitions. And later, once we add another scene, we're gonna come back and I'll show you what you can do with this. Over on the right hand side, we have a variety of different controls. At this point, we could start streaming to our favorite streaming service. We can also kick off a recording. And in a moment, we're gonna do this. We also have our virtual camera. We can also jump into settings or we can exit the application. For now, let's simply kick off a basic recording. Now I've started my recording and you can see I'm now recording my stream. So all of this is gonna be captured while I'm recording. And once I'm finished recording, all I have to do is click stop recording. Congratulations, we have our first recording. If you wanna watch your recording, all you have to do is go up into the file menu and click show recordings. 
And right here is where you're gonna see all of your recordings. And the one we're looking for is this one right here. So let's take a look. Now let's simply kick off a basic recording. Now I've started my recording and you can see- I'm Now this recording looks great, but the one thing that you're gonna notice is that it's an MKV file. And MKV files, you typically can't open in editing software, and it's not as easy to share with others either. To be able to work with this file, we're gonna go into the file menu and we're going to click Remux Recordings. Then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna select the recording that we just made right here. We're gonna open that, and then all we have to do is click Remux, and then OK. And now we can see that we have our recording Remuxed right here in MP4 format that makes it a lot easier to use in an editing software or share. Now you might be wondering, what if I want to record directly to MP4? That's kind of a pain to record something and then have to go back and remux it. To be able to change the default, all you have to do is go down here into settings and then go to output and recording. Or if you are in simple mode, you can just go right here and you can change your recording format. Now, of course, there is a reason why OBS is set to MKV as the default. Let's say maybe you're recording a two hour lecture with MP4. And if for some reason your computer crashes halfway through that lecture, you're going to lose every single bit of that recording. But with MKV, on the other hand, if your computer crashed halfway through, this lecture and everything up to that point of the crash is still gonna be saved. So you can think of that MKV as a bit of an insurance policy. It takes an extra step where you have to go and remux the file, but that way you have a little bit of extra security. Now, of course, if your recordings are something short, maybe just a minute or two, you can feel free to use MP4 because there's just very little risk of that sort of failure. Now, I'm guessing there are going to be people in the audience who probably only have one monitor. And you're wondering, how do I record the monitor if my OBS is up? Well, let's just make a little bit of an adjustment here so I can show you how to do that. So in instead of selecting my second display, let's select the one that we're using. And you can see that this kind of creates this inception thing. But what I'm gonna do is go ahead and hit record, and then I'm just gonna minimize this, and there we go. So now we are recording our scene right here, and uh, we can do whatever we want. Then all we have to do is go ahead and bring up our OBS again, and click stop recording, and we're all set. Now, the problem with that is, of course, that you have to do all this stuff, and it's pretty simple to actually just set up hotkeys. All we have to do is go into settings and hotkeys, and then what we can do is we can set hotkeys to start recording, to pause recording, and to stop recording. So we can set up a hotkey for this. We can just go with F1, and we can actually set our stop recording for F2. And there we go, we can click apply and okay. And then what we can do is if I minimize this, I can just hit F1. And if we go in here, we're gonna see that it's recording. And then we'll minimize it again, I'll hit F2. And if we go in here, we will see that it's stopped recording. So you can control it all with hotkeys. You don't actually have to worry about going and flipping back and forth to start and stop it. And you can actually control everything with hotkeys as well, just by going into settings and going into hotkeys. And you're gonna see how much more important this is for someone who's using a single monitor later on. Now that you know the basics of how to use OBS to capture your display, Next, I wanna show some of the more advanced uses of OBS. Now I wanna show you how you can build a more complex scene. And I wanna use the scene we just created as a base. So what I'm gonna do is right click on that and I'm gonna select duplicate. Then I'm gonna call it with webcam and click okay. And now we have two scenes that are exactly the same. I wanna add a webcam to this, so let's click the plus, and we're going to go to video capture device. And I'm just gonna call this camera and click okay. Then I'm gonna go ahead and you can drop down here and select what device your camera is that you wanna use. And the default looks pretty good, I'm just gonna click okay. Now, of course, this camera just takes up the entire screen. So what I need to do is resize it. So we're gonna make sure camera is selected so it has this red border. And then we can just drag the corners to adjust the size. And we can, of course, select it and move it anywhere we want on the screen. 
looks pretty good. Then what I'm gonna do is go ahead and tighten up the image. To do that, we're gonna do a little bit of a crop. So I'm gonna hold down my Alt key and I'm just gonna drag the edges over here and over here to crop this up so it's not covering so much of the background. So now we have a nice little image right here. Next, I wanna add a logo to the scene. So what I'm gonna do is click the plus and I'm gonna go to image and we'll just call this logo. And I'm gonna click OK, and all I have to do is browse to the location where I have that logo, and click Open, and, there, and I'll click OK. And now we can size this up. We could crop this if we want. And just so you are aware, if we select Desktop Display Capture, we can do the same thing with this. So if we only wanted to see a certain part of the display, we can crop that as well by holding down the Alt key. Now you can right click on this and go to transform and you can just reset the transform if you want it to go back to the way it was. And there we go, now we have our full thing. So now we have our little logo in here and we have our camera. So what I wanna do I think is add a little bit of a border around our camera. And so I'm just gonna click the plus right here and we're gonna to go to color source. And in color source, we're just gonna leave it at color source and click OK. And we wanna select a color for our color source. So let's just move it over here a little bit. And I'm gonna to go to select color. We can actually pick a color if we like. And boom, makes it the exact same color. And then OK. And now we have this big color piece here. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and shrink this up. I want this to be a border behind me. So we'll make it about that big and move it over the center. And as you can see, it is in front of the camera. Now you can move these really small increments by just making sure they have the red outline selected and you can use the arrow keys to adjust them up and down. The stuff listed in sources goes from top to bottom. So the color source is the top layer. Our logo is right below that. Our camera is below that. Well, we want this color source to be below our camera. So all we have to do is go ahead and drag it down below our camera. And there we go. So now it is below our camera. I can crop this up just like we did with our camera. Now we have a logo with our border. So the next thing I wanna show you is that anything that you have on here, you can hide or show at any time using this little eyeball right here. So we can remove our logo or we can show it. We can remove our camera and we can show it, but we can also lock things down. So if we were to lock our logo, our camera and our color source down, now we don't have to worry about accidentally moving them or anything. They're gonna stay right where they are no matter what we do. We can move around the background. We're never gonna accidentally grab it. But what makes this even easier is that if I select the top one, then I can hold down the shift key and I can select all three of these. If I right click, I can go ahead and I can group them together. And we can call this group cam logo. There we go. So now I can show or hide this all at one time. So if I'm doing a presentation and the camera's getting in the way, it's really simple for me to just adjust that. They're all still locked, you can't move them. So what I could do is go in here and I could unlock these right here and then I could just lock them from here. So now they still won't move, but you don't have to lock them all in one place and they're all grouped together. So we can basically make them disappear together. There is an easier way. You remember that we do have that other scene. Well, if we just wanted to switch over because our camera was getting in the way, all we really have to do is just switch to that other scene and we don't have those cameras in there. And I think you're probably starting to see how easy this is to use. Now, the one thing about switching from one scene to the other at this point is that it is quite harsh. It just cuts from one scene to the next, but we can fix that. Right over here in scene transitions, we can drop this down and we have the cut and the fade, but we can click the plus right here and we can add a swipe or a slide. So let's add a slide in here and we'll just leave it called slide. We can slide from the left to the right or the right to the left, whatever you want. We're just gonna select the default and click okay. And now when we change scenes, 
Well, you can see our scene slides from one side to the other. It creates a really, really cool animation. And adding those cuts is really simple. So for anyone who might be using a one monitor system, you're probably thinking, I don't wanna have to switch over into OBS to change scenes every time I only have one monitor. Well, you can actually use hotkeys for that as well. So we can go into settings and we can go into hotkeys and you can see that each one of these scenes has their own hotkey. So we've got switch to scene. We can set that to hotkey F3 and we have with webcam, we can set to F4. And now all we have to do is go ahead and click apply and okay. And now I can go to scene three, which is just our desktop. And I can go to scene four, which is our webcam with just pressing a button. And so when you're recording, you can click F1 to record, F2 to stop, F3 will change just to desktop, and F4 will change to the scene with your camera. And you can easily set all these hotkeys up so you don't have to worry that you can't actually see OBS. It's going to happen in the background and it's going to record everything that you wanted to record. Now one last thing that I want to show you is how you can organize stuff. So maybe you want to set a whole entire presentation up for work or for a live stream. Well, you can easily standardize it and have multiple different ones already set up. So let's say you record or you live stream. Well, you can set it up so that you can come into OBS and just select different profiles that will give you what you want. In order to do that, all we have to do is go over here where it says profile and drop that down. And you can see right now our profile is untitled. It is the default profile and we can rename that if we want. But we can also create a new profile, go through the configuration wizard and set it all up to stream. So you have one for recording and one for streaming. Now what you set up in the profile is everything that you're going to find down here in the settings. The scenes and stuff, well, they're done in a different place. Basically, that would be the scene collection. So right now we have a recording set up where we have two separate scenes. We can go into scene collection and we can create a new one and we can use this for live streaming. And when we click on that, you're gonna see it's totally empty. So now we can set up a live streaming setup and we can go back to scene collection and we can go to our untitled one and it brings us right back in here. So you can set up your settings and save different versions of the settings, one for live streaming and one for recording in profiles. And then you can save different sets of scenes in the scene collection. All right, that was a really quick look at how you can get started with OBS. If you wanna see how to set up more dynamic scenes for your live stream or maybe recordings, you should check this video out. Big thanks to all the sponsors that support this channel. You can find their links down below in the description under the heading sponsors. I couldn't possibly do this without them or you, so thanks. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.